if there wasn't a two second delay minimum to any input you give it until you plug in Apple CarPlay, which covers the entire screen. And then you don't get to see your TAC and CarPlay at the same time. Unusable thing I think I've ever used in a car. It's borderline dangerous to use on the highway. This is our first press car from Ferrari. You know they're never gonna give us a press car ever again, right? You don't know that. They didn't watch the Roma review, did they? I guess not. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. is the Ferrari F8 Tributo. In fact, Tributo means tribute, as in this car is here as a celebration of a lineage of V8 Ferraris, because it might just be the last. And what we mean by that is that this might be the last time we see a rear-wheel drive, mid-engine, non-hybrid V8 Ferrari. And okay, some of you might say that the last pure Ferrari was the 458 in terms of V8 mid-engine Ferraris. And I think I'd be inclined to agree with you. But in an era where a JPEG of a girl smiling in front of a burning house was just sold at auction for more than this supercar as some sort of non-tangible internet currency, I think that simplicity needs to be celebrated. So in this case, explosions, wheels, speed. from the 488 Pista. That's the special version of the previous one. 8,000 RPM red line. It might not sound like the 458, the naturally aspirated one, too before it, but the way it builds power, I am chasing that red line. Unfortunately, the sound of the F8's 3.9-litre twin-turboed V8 not only has to overcome the muting sock in the mouth that is its turbochargers, but it's also plagued by the classic particulate filter issues that are necessary for emissions. So despite that red line, it doesn't quite sing the way you'd want it to. The performance of this car is just sensational. And like Thomas and I were talking about this, like, is it too fast? Is 710 horsepower too much? And in some cars, it is. But the way this drives, the way the power is delivered, and the way you engage with it, it feels like a dance partner. The power is there. You know you can take it. It's bottomless, really. But you don't feel the need to. You can, if you want, drive this just like a sports car, nothing crazy. You don't have to drive it like a lunatic. You can access 400 horsepower with the throttle and it's, you don't have this kind of hunger, this kind of blue balls that you're not experiencing the car. At every speed, you get to savor the taste of the F8 Ferrari. It's not like an Aventador or a McLaren 720S. This isn't aggressive in nature, it's pretty. It's 
delicate. So even if you're of the camp that this is way too much power, that's not the actual focus of this car. It's the interaction between the driver and the engine. Like, we go on about manual transmissions and how they make you feel more connected to the car, but there comes a certain level of performance, and I, I think this steps past it a bit, where perhaps the best way to experience the car is with your hands firmly planted on the wheel and just delicately working your way through the gears with the paddle shifters. There's something about doing such a small action that makes such a huge impact on the car. It's like pulling the trigger on a 50 cal machine gun or flipping the bird to a dude named Chad in a lifted pickup truck. Sometimes small actions have large consequences. However, thankfully, unlike Chad, who coal rolls people on the weekends, Ferrari got their science from an engineering textbook, not Facebook which means that the shifts in this car are so mind-bogglingly good. The transmission is so fast and so engaging and so perfect that I can't help but giggle. I feel like an F1 driver diving into the first chicane at Monza, going down through five gears under braking. I wish I had a better way to describe it than what James said, but I don't. It just drives pretty. The whole chassis is so delicate. The steering is so precise and so natural the way that it weights up. I feel like I have complete control of this car and have absolutely no fear. This thing deals with every bump and undulation with a, a level of poetry that I don't think I've ever driven in any car ever. It's so insanely good. If I was to critique it, I would say that it doesn't have a carbon fiber chassis. It doesn't have a carbon tub. So you do get scuttle shake, even in the hardtop version. I've heard that the convertible is even worse. But if you can get over that, and just let the car guide you through the corners like this. I can't dance in real life, but driving this through here, I feel like I've been dancing my whole life. That's a good car. Mm. That's a really, Really, really good car. Yes, quite wonderful. Um, and it looks, it looks wonderful as well. Yeah, okay, so it looks wonderful, but it doesn't look as beautiful as the 458. You knew this is coming, because I've been talking about this for a while. Because it's just, it's just such an unnecessary no. distinction. No, it's, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I took an Instagram story of this every time I saw it in public for the last like five weeks I've been You here. did, yeah, I know. I love it, and I wished, I was like, I hope we get the blue Corsa, and I, we did. It, yes, we got blue, blue Corsa, which just means track blue. Is it race? I think it's race, isn't it? Corsa? Corsa race means... Racing blue. No, Corsa, Corsa is a trek. Italian's Racing. a bit rusty. Anyway, <laughs> yes, it is yeah. awesome looking. Yeah. No, I'm not going to take that away from it or you. But the 458, on which this is based, yeah. is more beautiful. And I have science now to prove this because, I, you know, Sketch Monkey, the guy yeah. that did our, our, our thing, our, designed our car. Yeah, very talented man. He's very talented. And he did a whole video explaining why this one isn't as good looking as the 458. Oh, well, I don't like him anymore then. <laughs> no, and it actually makes sense when you think about it because the lines, if you see it from the side, the lines in a really beautiful car have flow from front to back, yeah. okay? So any line that starts here will end up somewhere on the back. Okay. The lines in this one are a little bit broken up. Like it kind of, that one disappears there and doesn't fully connect at the bottom front, okay? And the nose is too busy compared to the 458. It is busier, and, and you know, when the 458 came about, it was like, whoa. Yes. If this is the new Ferrari design language, I'm in. Yeah. 
But this feels like an evolution of that. It, no, uh, I agree. I agree. Listen, I still agree with that. I just think that basically I'm going to look back in 50 years and go, most beautiful supercar ever made, 458 Italia. This is not the most beautiful. Like, you know what I mean? But this like, is a cousin, a, a sibling. Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a sibling that's like roided out a little bit. Yeah, it still has beautiful wheels. I think those wheels are going to be timeless. They are very cool. And I think the design will be timeless. This will always look like a Ferrari. And the brakes are huge and awesome. Question for you. We recently released a video of the new Maserati MC20. Yes, we did. Beautiful car. Lovely. Same color scheme. Yes. Which is prettier? Which is prettier? The MC20 is a prettier car. This is a right. cooler looking car. Yeah, hold on. I, mean, I, think, I, think I finished my sentences. This is a cool looking car, but the MC20 is prettier. Prettier in terms of flow and beauty and simplicity. Ah, I'm conducting think, an orchestra. I think orchestra. what we've learned here is it's completely subjective and they both look awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah they look really um, cool, 100%. Yeah, I mean, this is the carbon fiber bits going on here. Yeah. Um, and we, obviously we can see this V8 engine yep. through this kind of plasticky thing here, but that's an ode, I think, to the F40, isn't it? Because it's the- Yeah, and it, well, it's also lighter. Yeah. Right? I think it's so beautiful. No, it is. I, I, I agree. I've, I've loved every second of it. It's this crazy car. looking. I love this car. I love this car. But when we got inside of the Roma, which is the most recent Ferrari we drove, yes. you didn't really love the interior. No, but I love this one. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, so. Oh, okay, yeah. So, listen, the quality of these cars is very good, but if you hit something, anything hard enough, it will bend. Yeah. In this case, someone has bumped this. This is a, a used press car. And this no longer says Ferrari over here. It says Ferrari. Well, it, what's bent? The I. The I? Yeah. OK, so on this side, yeah. the F is bent. Really? Yeah, so it's Ferrari. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a shame. That's too bad. Wasn't us. I Wasn't like us. I want to fix it. That's it. OK, here we go. Ugh. All right. You know what? You slide into these seats. There's a bug in here. Hold on, it's gonna. Okay. It's an Italian bug. It's an ouch. Uh, it's a German bug trying to learn about what the Italians are doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, you slide. Makes it cost more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that memo never got there. Yeah. Because you trapped the bug. Yeah. Um, as you slide into these seats, they feel like they're going to be hard and uncomfortable. And we've been in and this. Not. We've been in this car for hours, and it's it's so comfortable. Yeah, like you, they are hard and uncomfortable, but like they're not long term. They're, they're really, really nice. They're just yeah, they're perfectly. He's really shouting at you now. What have you done? You <laughs> led to the bug go. I can't do the Italian accent. You led to the bug go. Antonio. Dominic de Coco. Dominic de Coco. Um, yeah, these are very comfortable seats. We love Italy and Germany, love by Italy. the way. Love Seriously. Italy. Give me a bratwurst on a pizza. The, 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 the works perfectly. <laughs> um, okay, so inside. It's like the leather quality is really high. Yeah. It's so supple, like smooth, like I, I love it. I right. love it in the carbon fiber trimming everywhere. And it's not the Roma. It's not the SF90. It hasn't got the new tech. You see, I was gonna, I was gonna lean into that in a second, really hard, but yeah, 100%. But well, we don't this need is to. Get... So much better. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't need to go on at the Roma, but this is just brilliant. Um, I love the silver slash aluminium um, gauge. Yeah, that's yeah. an expensive option. Too. It, it, it look, I, I hope it comes out on camera. It looks so cool. It's beautiful. It really. Yeah, really we've got is. the little Apple CarPlay in this screen here. Yeah, and you can adjust what you want on that screen using this little knob over here. Yeah, and then I mean, this we've got the Manatino settings. Uh, it's lovely. It's lovely. I love it. I, I don't have anything bad to say about it, honestly. Like it, it feels special. It feels outside, special. inside, from the driver's seat. Hopefully, the the interior tech in the next gen Ferraris is improved because. I think going away from this steering wheel design was a mistake, mm -hmm. but I mean, we will always have these. I, I, you know what I want? I want this car with a naturally aspirated engine. Ah, oh, well, sir, we, that exists. Yes. I'll just get one for you for half the price. Half the price. Yeah. yeah Ferrari 458. 458. So like, I think that I would still rather just have this exact car, but with the four five original four five eight engine. Because of the sound. Because of the sound, and right? Just the power delivery. It's literally the only thing this car is missing for me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Just sound. Oh, and the slight scuttle shake. Yeah. So the oh, those two things. This is a perfect supercar. Yes. And the only reason you know about those two things is because everything else is so perfect. You notice them. <laughs> yeah, them. that's it. Yeah. So, I think it's fair to say that we got on a lot better with the F8 than we did with the Roma, mostly because our brains weren't fuddled with a confusing UI, and as a result, we were able to focus only on the enjoyment of the car. 
but also because, and we can't stress this enough, the F8 is simply brilliant. And yeah, okay, as far as new supercars go, a McLaren 720S is quicker in a quarter mile. And yes, the F8 sound doesn't match something like a V10 scream that comes from a naturally aspirated Lamborghini Huracan. But if a Huracan sings, the Ferrari dances. And by the end of the week, this car, above many others that we've tested, was incredibly hard to part ways with. Thanks for watching.